the sport button is very sensitive in this car. <laughs> This is the question guys. We're close to the thousand mark. It means we can start monetizing. What do we do with the E46 M3? What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Driver's Apex. I have not held a camera to my face like this in a minute and it's a little bit different. So what I want to talk to you guys about is this. It's time to really start investing some time in the E46 M3 and personalizing it like I have uh, with my E30. So the question is, do I keep it it the transmission stock with the smg um and dump some money into like a carbon fiber airbox or do i instead just transition convert this uh smg to a six-speed manual that's really the question guys what do you guys want to see this is the car that i want to start doing more videos with and i want you guys to answer these questions so let's go for a ride we'll talk about a little bit more uh, all right guys we had a little delay uh, i was in the car ready to head out and one of the neighbors stopped by they had a flat tire in their Prius but ultimately what we needed to do was to replace the tire with the spare and the spare was super low on tire pressure so it's kind of sketchy all right I talk about oil temps all the time uh oh man look at all this dirt on the road it's disgusting you need to get a street sweeper out here but oil temps are everything but yeah, let's get back to talking about SMG stuff. I really do enjoy the SMG and it appears that there are, there's definitely a, a portion of the E46 community that also enjoys their SMG. And I think the SMG really shines when the CSL tune is applied. I don't think there's anything that matches the downshift on a CSL uh, tuned SMG box. Uh, hands down, I think it's phenomenal. I don't think any of us can heel toe that perfectly. The clunking, I think clunking is just part of the SMG experience. It can be kind of annoying. I definitely get that. Oh man, the car pulled out in front of us. I'm just getting busy on this on this road. There's a lot of homes being built. Um, but I've been driving the E30 a lot lately and I absolutely love it. The wife's driving it today. She has it down on campus and absolutely loves it. I think it's one of the best cars out there. Both these cars are paid for. There's no point in getting rid of them or anything else like that. And if I did get rid of them, what am I gonna buy? Everything is so expensive nowadays. That's really unfortunate. But I think for this car to be more engaging, I think, I hate to say it, but I think converting um, and doing the swap, a true six speed swap, is I think the way to go. I think it would be more fun than just putting a carbon fiber airbox on the car. While that would sound phenomenal, um, it would be a lot of fun. I don't think there's still anything that does replace a manual transmission. I'll be the first to admit that. I know I've made a video on why I think the SMG is so good, and I do think it really is good, but it does lack some of the engagement that a six speed gives you. That's just facts. So I suspect that a lot of you are gonna agree and um, suggest that I swap the car over to a six speed. Now the question is, do I do it myself or do I send it out somewhere uh, like Lang out in California who has a reputation uh, for doing things perfectly? And I think it being done at Lang, I think allows the car to hold its value or bring the most money possible given that it's a six speed swap because I think everyone in the community trusts Lang, knows that their work is absolutely great. I think I can do this really well, um, and I think I can do it just as well as Lang. I think the big thing that probably is the most difficult, and to make sure it looks as OEM as possible, is the rear uh, shift carrier bracket. I think that for me, getting that done perfectly, or as close to OEM as possible, I think for me, that's the most important thing. I can pull the bell housing out, I can do all that stuff, make sure everything looks good. For me, if we do this swap, it needs to look as OEM as possible. So that I think is the big thing for me. So let me know guys, should I do a six speed swap on this car? Should I not do a six speed swap and instead do the carbon fiber airbox? Or should I focus on the E30? Should I just go ahead and build a super dope stroker setup on it, like a two nine high compression setup, something that's making, you know, 250 horsepower. 
I think that's probably about as max we would get out of it. Of course, it needs to run on a MoTeC or a Megasquirt or something like that or a Haltech. So that would cost, I think, a lot of money as well. I don't know that the build itself would cost as much. I think some of it is just the electronics and the tuning. But what do you guys want to see on the channel? Does it make sense to spend some money on converting the E46 M3 and doing more content with the M3? Does it make more sense just slap a carbon fiber air box in it and just, ha you know, just hammer on this thing all the time? Or do we spend some time on the E30? I don't know, guys. You guys let me know. I thought it was really important to make a quick vlog about this and bring you guys into this decision because at the end of the day, you are the ones who are watching the video. I want to make sure that you guys are interested, that you're coming back to the channel as much as possible. And I think comments are necessary, right? Like it can't just be me doing all this stuff and not having input from you guys. So just comment below. So I hope you guys like this video. Comment, 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 comment. And if you guys haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. We're so close to a thousand. It's super exciting. Maybe we celebrate a thousand with doing something like this. I don't know. So see you guys later.